All right, guys, it is time to discuss the Stanley Cup playoff event for NHL 20 as we enter into round two, obviously highlighted by the two new master set players in the 99 of Gennady Kuznetsov and the 99 Henrik Zetterberg. We're going to get into all of those cards, plus of all the normal releases as well as uh, we get a quick snapshot here that features some cards from the 2000 season, 2008, 2016, 2010, 2017, and 2018, all over the place. So let's go ahead and start breaking down those cards. So we will kick things off with the 92 Scott Hannon. Not going to lie, pretty odd choice considering he had tons of playoff runs with the San Jose Sharks. But we'll go with the Avalanche here. Six foot one, which is decent size, two to SP. But then again, guys, a lot of the problems with the old Icon players in this series, 91 speed, 89 acceleration, 88 agility, would have been a better fix early on in the year, obviously, to try and help the you know the, the builds and, and the speed stat kind of stop getting away from the high-end progression that we have now. But unfortunately, this kind of just ends the conversation with him. Uh, you're going to get blown by at this stage of the game, regardless of what your team looks like. He does have a good shot at 94 power, 85 accuracy. But even with synergies... Uh, this one wouldn't be a recommend for me. After him, we've got the 92 Nick Benino. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know that the 97 Nick Benino is one of the cards I reference the most because it is a very, very good and undervalued card. Now, this one, 6'1", so he's decent size, 99 skating across the board, 93 shot power, 87 accuracy, and also really good synergies, 2 to 1 T, FB, and X. Uh, hand stats all in 90. Awareness stats a little low at under 90, which you want to see a little bit higher, but he also has 98 faceoff. This is a great center card to go after if you are trying to break in, if your team is in the like low 90s, or if you've got a lot of 80s on your team and you're looking to upgrade at center. This Nick Bonino card would be great and not going to cost you a lot. After him, we've got the 90, or sorry, six foot one Matthew Barnaby, 92 overall. Man, I love Barnaby whack when I was a kid. So 99 skating across the board, which is nice. 92 shot power, 87 accuracy, 99 body checking. His defensive awareness is 91 as well. Uh, hand stats, obviously not very good. It is Matthew Barnaby, but he does have 91 puck control and 92 passing to go along with 99 balance. Uh, the strength is a little low, but I don't think it'll matter because he is 6'1 and 99 body checking. This is actually a pretty fun winger card uh, when you add all of it in together. After him, we've got the 93 Braden Holtby, 6'2". Uh, unfortunately, just the way the meta is and, and how these cards have played so far uh, throughout the year, 91 glove high is nice, 94 positioning is great, as is the speed stat at 93, but then the aggression is at 84, which means he's going to play out of the net a little bit, it's going to be harder to stop those one-timers uh, through the slot, and uh, just, you know, not really something I want to recommend you guys, especially considering he's six foot two. so this one would be a pass as well, if you pack him, I would sell him. After him, we've got the 93 John Gibson. So, same kind of issue here. He's a little bit taller at 6'3". John Gibson cards have been known uh, throughout the, the, this year and last year specifically to have a little bit more use. Uh, a lot of players, or some players, find him to be very, very good. 2-1T, to one T, 2 to TK, 2-SP, to SP, really good synergies. All the stats kind of align, but then in that aggression, anything over 80 is kind of my benchmark from what I want to recommend to you guys. But this is borderline. He would have to be pretty cheap. Um, in comparison to other goaltenders, like I would rather have the 91 Mike Smith, uh, Mar the 90 Markstrom, things like that. Uh, just, you know, not tall enough to make up for the fact he's got high aggression and not 99 or high 90 glove high in positioning. Then we've got the 94 overall Chicago Blackhawk, Christopher Steak, 5'11", so he's just at or slightly below uh, the, the decent height in NHL 20, 99 skating. His shot in the low 90s as well, hand stats all 93. Um, not a bad winger card at all. Uh, 2 to 1T, 2 to FB, 2 to DK. I think there are better options, but if we take a look real quick at what he's going for in the auction house, depends uh, if, if a lot of impulse or not, this is early. 170, not terrible. Uh, if he got down to like under 150, I think that'd be a good card or good spot to pull the trigger on. After him, we've got the 94 Ryan Kessler. I can't stand him as a player, as a Sharks fan, but. It is what it is. Six foot two, two oh two, ninety nine skating, ninety four uh, accurate power, eighty nine accuracy, hand stats all above ninety, and his body checking is ninety four. 
Face-offs at 99. He was always great on the draw. This is a very, very good center card. Again, kind of that uh, next level up from Nick Benino if you are able to afford him. Uh, great size, good speed, good shot, great at center, as well as body checking. Uh, is right-handed, though. That's the only issue. If you can use right-handed centers, perfect. If not, then I don't know if he'd be that useful to you. You're going to have to pay up for the fact that he's got 99 draws. Um, if you're going to use him on the wing, don't know if that's worth it. Then we've got the 95 Johan Franz, and this is a great card. Six foot four, two thirty-two. Guy is a unit. 99 skating, 99 shot power, 93 accuracy. Hand stats all above 91. Body checking, 99 awareness stats in the mid 90s. This is a fantastic left-handed winger card. One of the better ones. I'm curious to try him out because he's going to take down a lot more cards that are higher rated than him. This is the perfect kind of build and card for NHL 20. Then we've got the 95 Dustin Bufflin. So if Franzen was a perfect winger card build in NHL 20, Dustin Bufflin is the perfect defenseman card. Six foot five, two sixty. You're not bumping him off the puck, and you're going to be able to just throw guys around. He's got 98 skating across the board, essentially. His shot power is 98. Accuracy at 88 under 90, which is a little bit lower for this stage of the game, but still good enough because he is going to be able to rifle a shot through with that 98 power. Uh, strength body checking 99 puck control passing at 93 very very good card one of the best right-handed defensemen in the game then we've got the 96 keith primo again this card suffers from that icon build early on in the year so six foot five 220 and what i mean by icon build at the beginning of the year when they release everything at the beginning of the year, the base cards and whatnot, the icons are kind of tuned to have a better shot and peripheral stats as opposed to skating to try and balance them out. And as they increase or they get new cards, it just kind of seems like they increase everything static. So you're left with a Keith Primo that's got 94 speed, 91 acceleration and agility. The 99 balance helps, but you're going to have to be someone who really, really cycles, doesn't score off the rush, plays really slow. His shots in the low to mid-90s, hand stats in the mid-90s, body checking and strength 99, awareness stats almost perfect, and then shot blocking, stick checking, and face-offs almost perfect as well. He's a very, 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 very good card. Um, the only problem is, is that he's got low speed, and even with synergies, you are going to notice that he plays slow. But if you're someone who doesn't score off the rush very often, you're someone who really dominates TOA, this is a great card. And we've got the 97, Roman Yossi. His card earlier in the year from the Winter National event was really, really well done. Uh, 99 skating, 98 power, 89 accuracy. Uh, for someone a little bit smaller, you kind of want to see a better shot. But that being said, he's got 94 body checking, passing puck control, 98 as well. And then every other defensive stat is almost perfect at oh, awareness, shot blocking, stick checking. He's going to be very, very good, but... When you're you're gonna have to pay up a lot for this Roman Yossi card, and when you consider the other options at left defense, whether it be you know Headman, Chara, uh, Coffee, those kinds of cards, I'd rather have them than this one. So just keep that in mind. Then we've got the 98 Connor McDavid. Connor, um, unfortunately, has suffered quite a bit this year uh, just because of how the game plays. But there are you, there has been better options at the ultimate high end. Obviously, Connor McDavid is a great card, one of the best, but Obviously, if you were talking sentiment, we'd rather have the 99 Kopitar just based on how the game plays. But 99 skating, almost perfect shooting, almost perfect hand stats, body checking 89 is rough. Uh, Faceoffs only 92, so this is going to be a winger card. So keep that in mind when you're kind of building your team or seeing if he's worth the investment. Um, like I said, there are cards that I'd rather have over him, like the 97 Yager, for example. Um, but obviously, he is an end game card. Um, just, you know. I've I've heard I've heard bad things or I've heard people uh, the high end people in the game high end players kind of just move away from him this year. And then we into the master set. So the ninety nine Henrik Zetterberg. I called this one on stream. I figured that there would be a Red Wing, and they don't like doing duplicates in uh, master sets this year. So I figured that the Zetterberg would get a card. Ninety nine everything. Like there is. There is no holes in this card. He has an insane amount of synergies. The only knock is he's six foot, but that is besides the point because he's literally almost perfect. So um, we're going to get into the value of him in a little bit, but this is one of the best centermen in the game. And then finally, we go with the Evgeny Kuznetsov, 99 overall. This card looks awesome. I love the card for this series. Again, there's really no holes except for... The fact that Kuznetsov is 100% a winger at 88 face-off. I'd love to see that a little bit higher, but regardless, 
he is going to be uh, one of the best left-handed winger cards in the game for the remainder of the game. So let's get into all of the costs and sets and whatnot as, uh, as it pertains to this event. So just to kind of recap the sets and whatnot, guys, please avoid doing these ones. Like, if you have 13 collectibles, just hold on to them. Even if you don't think you're going to be able to get the remaining amount, this is 650 k in value, and you have a chance at getting the 92s. Like, if you got Scott Hannon and Benino for 650 k that's rough. So I wouldn't do it, um, but uh, we'll get into that in a second here. So if you want, you can do uh, the 99 overall Master Set Choice item, and... Um, Obviously, it's it's this one's tough as well because you're talking about like 1.3 million in value. If you have this many collectibles, you're either spending money or you have a you've been saving for a very very long time. The cards that you get here, one of them, no matter who you get, will be worth. Mm. It depends how many are untradeable. Uh, I'll say that. So let's get into the actual ones right here. Is um, the 99 Kuznetsov and um, and. Uh, Zetterberg cards. So you can trade in your 90 heavy hitters and 13 collectibles. 100% worth it as, you know, this card was going for like 150 to 200k plus the 650. That's definitely worth it. These cards are worth about a million. 100% do that if you have that Tom Wilson. Moving on to the other ones, let's take a look. 95 Gonchar and 7 uh, for 99 Kuznetsov or Zetterberg. If you, unless you're, so here's the thing. When the Gonchar came out, he was a very, very good left defenseman card, but there's so many other great ones in the high 90s now. For, or offense is more important than defense, 100%. So if you have this card, he is worth the seven collectibles on top of it to get either Zetterberg or Kuznetsov, um, 100%. The other option to trade in, we also have the. 89 Kuznetsov and 16 collectibles. 16 collectibles is still quite a bit as like you're you're looking at about 800k but you're saving yourself again quite a bit in in terms of like he's not he's under a mill still in value. So if you do have this card, I would look to try and do that. Um, but again, that's going to determine how many collectibles you're able to grab. Uh, for Datsuk uh, sorry, for Zetterberg, you can trade in the heavy hitter McCarty and 13. Again, super worth it. If you have this card untradeable or something, 100% do this one. That one is a definite value. And then the other one is going to be the 93 Zetterberg. As this was a great card when it came out on his own. Like um, back, in the, back earlier on in, in the Winter National event, this is one of the best cards to grab. If you have him, 100% do the upgrade as well. Uh, definitely think that he is worth it. We've got some other options as well. We'll go through these as the 90 trade deadline for Stieg and three um, and three gold collectibles for the 94. I would actually do this um, because the 94 Christopher Stieg is going to give him that really good shot. Um, so I, I would, even though he's five foot eleven, that's still that's still fine. The Dustin Bufflin, if you have, I believe it was the uh, heavy hitters event. Yes, uh, yeah, that's going to be an affirmative. Again, Bufflin's going to be one of the best cards in the game. That, that's worth it for 15 gold collectibles. The 96 Keith Primo for 14, uh, for 13 collectibles and the uh, leaders one, I would not do. Again, the speed on Primo, just not enough. 92 Barnaby is going to require 12 gold collectibles and the 84. Wouldn't do it for this one, unfortunately. Just There's no point. If you have that many collectibles, go and save them for a Master Set player. Um, so, and then work towards obviously the, the choice one. So, uh, I hope this helps guys in terms of the new, uh, sets and whatnot for the second round of this event. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below and please subscribe as you will receive daily hockey ultimate team content right here on my channel. Have a good one guys.